welcome to the Geomestic channel. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at a few parallelogram properties along with the proofs of those properties, specifically using parallel lines and transversals to help us out here. Before we dive in, please take advantage of the guided notes worksheet found by clicking the link in the description below. You can print that out and write some things down as we go. Now in a previous lesson um, found right up here, we took a broad look at the seven different types of quadrilaterals, giving a basic definition for each one. And we said that a parallelogram, by definition, is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel to each other. We denote parallel sides with these little red arrows here. Okay, so the definition of a parallelogram, quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. And we can use the fact that these sides are parallel to each other to develop a few other properties. Um, now some of these properties might seem kind of obvious, but we'll go ahead and run through um, why these properties hold true uh, with a little bit of proof. So the first property that we're gonna take a look at here, call these A, B, C, D. First property we'll look at is the fact that not only are the opposite sides of a parallelogram parallel, thus the name parallelogram, we also know that the opposite sides are congruent as well. Now, to prove that this is true, we're going to utilize a couple of things that you've probably done in the past. Um, the first of which, uh, we're gonna draw this diagonal here. So the diagonal of a parallelogram is just uh, a segment that connects two non-adjacent vertices. So from A to C, we're gonna draw that diagonal, and we've essentially cut this parallelogram into two triangles. Okay, so these two triangles here are what we're going to use to get this um, idea that the opposite sides are congruent to each other. We're going to prove that. So, first step here is we're going to recognize that because we have parallel lines, we're going to have um, these different angle pairs, namely these alternate interior angles. So if I extend out um, the top and bottom of this parallelogram, so we have these lines that are parallel here to each other, and then this diagonal is your transversal. So if you just kind of focus on these purple lines here, so the two parallel lines and the transversal, you may remember um, some different angle pairs. And the first one we're gonna look at here is these two. So these are alternate interior angles here and here. And if you remember, alternate interior angles are on opposite sides of the transversal in between interior, in between the parallel lines. And we know that alternate interior angles are always congruent to each other as long as the lines are parallel. So these two angles here are going to be the same. Now, if I look at the other side um, of the transversal, I've got these two angles, which are also alternate interior, and those are gonna be congruent as well. So we've got the two pairs of alternate interiors that are congruent to one another. Uh, and now we have these two triangles with the diagonal through the middle, we know that this middle side, if we're looking at these two triangles here, this middle side that they both share by the reflexive property, I can mark that side congruent to itself. And now we have angle, side, angle in each triangle marked congruent. Uh, and if you remember angle, side, angle, that is a, um, a theorem that says if you got two triangles where you have an angle, a side, and an angle in that order congruent in two sets of triangles, uh, that makes those two triangles congruent to each other. So if you want to check out that video, if you don't remember angle side angle, you can check it out right up there. And then finally, once I know the two triangles are congruent, so triangle A, B, C, and triangle C, D, A, these two triangles are congruent by angle side angle, we know that all the other parts that correspond with one another in these two triangles are congruent. So not just the, the pieces that we have marked congruent, but everything else in these two triangles. So namely, I know that um, this side, AB, and this side, DC, would have to be congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or CPCTC. Um, we have a video about that as well. So CPCTC says that any other corresponding parts of these two triangles have to be congruent because I know the two triangles are congruent. So I've got these two sides, but I also have these two sides. Okay, so once the triangles are congruent, all parts of those two triangles that correspond have to be congruent as well. Thus we have that the opposite sides in this parallelogram have to be congruent. Okay, so that's property number one. Opposite sides in a parallelogram are congruent. Let's take a look at the second one. Okay, 
So the parallel ram here, opposite sides are parallel. Second property we're gonna look at here says that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are also congruent. So we can prove that the opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal to each other as well. To do that, once again, utilizing these parallel lines, I'm gonna extend out again. So parallel line AB, DC. Okay, so we got parallel top and bottom. And let's go with this transversal right here. There we go. Okay, so parallel lines, transversal. We had alternate interior, if remember those were equal, but we have these two right here, angle A and angle D. These are what we call same side interior. Okay, same side interior, they're both on the right of that transversal in between the two parallel lines. So same side interior, we had a property about those. Uh, if you remember, and it's that same side interior angles are supplementary to each other. Okay, so same side interior angles are supplementary. That means angle A plus angle D is equal to 180 degrees. So that property for same side interior angles, that they're supplementary, they add up to 180. That's what we're gonna use this time to get this property that the opposite angles are congruent. Okay, so to get that, I know that angle A and angle D have to add up to 180, they're supplementary. But because I have parallel lines here, and I also have parallel lines here, so thinking that these two lines are parallel, I have a transversal here, and that makes D and C same side interior angles as well. So not only are A and D going to be supplementary, C and D have to be supplementary as well. And if I have two angles, A and C, that are both supplementary to the same angle, D, that forces A and C to be congruent to one another as well. Okay, so two angles that are supplementary to the same angle have to be equal. Just as a number example, let's say that this angle was, uh, we'll just say it's 100 degrees. If that angle was 100 degrees and these two angles are supplementary, they have to add up to 180, that makes this angle 80 degrees. But if these two angles are also supplementary, this one also has to be 80 degrees, thus making A and C congruent to each other. And I can do the same thing with angle B up here. I can say that uh, if C is supplementary to B, but C is also supplementary to D, that would make B and D congruent as well. Okay, so for that fact, I know that opposite angles, angle A and angle C, are congruent, and then opposite angles D and B are also congruent to each other as well. Okay, so kind of two properties here, the opposite angles are congruent. We can also say that um, these consecutive angles, um, the angles that are on the same side here, those are always gonna be supplementary. So consecutive angles here, 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 there, there. Those are supplementary, opposite angles are congruent. That's property number two. Okay, the last property here. Last property has to do with the diagonals, both diagonals of the parallelogram. So we get, we get A, B, C, D. We're gonna draw both diagonals this time. And we're gonna call that intersection point E right there in the middle. Okay, so the last property we're gonna take a look at here is that in a parallelogram, the diagonals are going to bisect each other. Okay, so the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Now, what does that mean again? Bisect means to cut in half. So this property says that these two diagonals here are going to cut each other in half at that point E in the middle. So BE and DE have to be equal, and then AE and CE also have to be equal. Now, to prove this one, we're gonna kind of use the strategies that we used um, with the other properties and combine them together. So I'm not gonna use my purple pen again, but we know that, again, since these are parallel here and here, we've got these alternate interior angles. We've got a, quite a few pairs of them here, but all these alternate interior angles are gonna be congruent to each other. So well, let's do it this way. Let's say this is angle one, call this angle two, we'll call this angle three, we'll call this angle four. Okay, so we've got these alternate interior angles that are going to be congruent to each other. In this case, we've got angle 1 and angle 3. Those are alternate interior. 
those are congruent. And then angle two and angle four is another set, and those are gonna be congruent. Okay, alternate interior angles are always congruent to each other as long as the lines are parallel. Now, what we'll notice here is that since this is a parallelogram, and we've already stated in the first property that the opposite sides are not only parallel, but the opposite sides are also congruent. Again, we're gonna utilize this triangle idea. I've got these two triangles here. I've got triangle A, B, E, so this triangle right here. And I've got triangle C, E, D, this triangle over here. And we've got the workings for angle side angle. We've got an angle, a side, and an angle marked congruent in this triangle angle side angle marks congruent in this triangle. So we're gonna utilize the fact that these two triangles here are congruent by angle side angle to then use CPCTC to get some other parts marked. So kind of slow down here. So this triangle here and this triangle here. So those two triangles are gonna be congruent because they have angle side angle marks congruent. And since the two triangles are congruent, all other corresponding parts, namely, I know that AE, this segment here, and CE, this segment here, those have to be the same because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, CPCTC. We can also get this segment BE and DE congruent as well for the same reason. Okay, so again, once the triangles are congruent, in this case by angle side angle, any other corresponding parts can also be marked congruent. Now, once we have this, um, the property we said is that the diagonals bisect each other, and since bisect means to cut in half, we know that BD has been cut in half. We've got two congruent parts at that point E, so at that midpoint where those two diagonals intersect, and we've got the same thing going on here with AC. So AC gets cut in half at point E, meaning that the diagonals in this parallelogram do bisect each other. Okay, so those are the three properties. Let's do some real quick examples here to kind of put those into practice. There's lots of different ways you can set up problems with these properties. Um, we're just gonna look at just some real short ones here. So let's start with, let's start with this. So we've got a parallelogram. And let's say that this angle down here in this corner is 65 degrees. So we've got a 65 degree angle. And maybe we were trying to figure out the measures of the other three angles. So we've got X, Y, and Z for the other three. Okay, so utilizing the properties that we have, the quickest way to go here is that we know opposite angles are congruent to one another. So we know that angle Y has to be the same as this angle down here, which is 65. So angle Y is 65 degrees. And then with that property, we also said that not only are the opposite angles congruent, the consecutive angles have to be supplementary. So supplementary meaning they add up to 180 degrees. So 65 plus what gets us to 180? That's gonna be 115. Okay, so X is 115. And again, if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, they gotta be equal. Opposite angles here, X and Z, those are also the same. So we got 115 for Z as well. Simple enough. Let's do another angle example. Um, we'll use the diagonals this time. So we've got the diagonals drawn. Let's get a couple of angles here. We'll say this is angle one, angle two, and angle three. And let's say this angle is 75 degrees, and this angle up here we're gonna call 50 degrees. So 50 degrees here, 75 here, we're trying to find angles one, two, and three using these properties of parallelograms that we know. All right, so the first step, if we kind of consider what we know, consider the angles that we already have. Um, because we have this angle here, 75, since these two angles, one and 75, are on a straight line, these are called a linear pair. Two angles next to each other on a straight line always have to add up to 180 degrees. They're supplementary. We can get angle one pretty quick. So angle one, 75 plus what? Gets us to 180. That would be 105. So angle one here is 105 degrees. 
Okay, the next thing we can do is we can look at, at the center here where these two angles, uh, or all four angles connect here. We've got some vertical angles, 75 degrees. I know that this angle over here on the other side is also 75. Vertical angles are always the same. And once we move that over here, we've got a triangle with angle 50, 75, and angle three here. So in a triangle, every triangle, every three angles, um, they have to add up to 180 as well. So if we add up 75 and 50, subtract that from 180, we can figure out what that third angle has to be. 75 and 50 is 125, and 180 minus 125 is 55. So angle three here is 55 degrees. Now we can use that fact to say that two and three, since those are alternate interior angles, those are always equal to each other. If angle three is 55, angle two, also 55. There we go. Okay, so we can use lots of other um, old properties like vertical angles and alternate interior, those kind of things. Those are all gonna come into play with parallelograms because you have those parallel sides. All right, last example, we'll do a little bit of algebra here. So parallelogram A, B, C, D it is a parallelogram by putting those parallel sides. And let's say that this side over here, um, we'll call that 2x minus 7, and this will be x plus 5. Okay, so a parallelogram side AB uh, here, 2x minus 7, DC x plus 5. Obviously, we've got some expressions here. We're gonna do some algebra. We're gonna to have to set up an equation to solve for x. And then once we solve for x, we're gonna go back and plug it in to see what the lengths of these two sides actually are. Now, when you're doing algebra and geometry, a lot of times you're looking for um, one of two relationships. This isn't always the case, but in problems like this, you're really looking for either two things that are the same, two things that are congruent, or maybe two things that are supplementary or add up to 180. In this case, since we're talking about two opposite sides of a parallelogram, our first property says that these two sides have to be congruent. And if two things are congruent, we can always set them equal to each other to figure out um, what the value of x has to be. So that's what we're gonna do. So I know that 2x minus seven and x plus five are equal to each other at the same length. So if I set those equal to each other, just a quick two-step equation here. I'm gonna add that seven, move that to the other side. So I've got x plus seven plus five is 12. And I've got one x, x is on both sides. If this is one x, I can subtract one x from both sides. And I'll have x equals 12. x equals 12. Now if x is equal to 12, what I can do then is I can come back up here to each segment. I can plug that in to figure out what the lengths of these sides are. In this case, does it really matter which we plug into? Not really, they're the same. If I wanted to check my answer, I could plug it into both just to double check and I'll do that just to make sure. But if x is 12, I can plug that in here. 12 plus five, that gets me my length CD. 12 plus five is 17. And this, these are the same, but I'll double check. Two times 12 is 24, 24 minus seven. And we're good because that is also 17. So there's a couple different types of examples that you might see when we're talking about uh, properties of parallelograms. There we go, so that's it. Uh, if this video was helpful for you, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. If you click on the subscribe button down below, uh, you can see more of these videos as they come out. And as always, please feel free to share with anybody that you feel would benefit from these videos as well. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.